Hello everyone and welcome back to my 999 let's play. The last time I left you off with a bit of a mean cliffhanger. I mean I could have gone meaner, especially considering the time, but still. We found Clover's dead body, sadly. And uh finally had Junpei figure out that Snake is in fact not dead, but somebody else. And uh we are cornering Ace. Because uh he is the killer, or we suspect him to be the killer, but the evidence are pretty bad against him, and uh yeah. Let's see what he does next. <sighs> Let's see his Ace Attorney breakdown. <laughs> he looked down at the floor, his face hidden from Junpei. All he could see was the corner of Ace's mouth, twitching like a dying fish. If you want to play innocent, that's fine by me. Go ahead, tell me. I don't have the bracelet, if that's what you want to do. But if you could take off your coat and hand it to me, I'd really appreciate it. Otherwise, we'll have to take it from you by force. Right, Seven? Yeah, it'd be my pleasure. Seven cracked his knuckles with a sound like gunfire. <laughs> Ace roared with laughter, like an evil man. He threw his arms wide and his head back and laughed, filling the room with a sound that scarcely belonged there. <laughs> then it stopped. <laughs> His arms came down and his head dropped to look straight ahead at Junpei. Oh god. <laughs> his face was flat and cold, devoid of any emotion. Honestly, that doesn't look that dissimilar to that other sprite I mentioned way earlier, where he looks dead in the eyes. I'm just saying, he has been sus from the very beginning. Well done, Junpei. As you so correctly deduced, I have the number 9 bracelet. I retrieved it while we were searching for the missing hardware for the red. Also... But... So the thing is, Ace is alive- at uh, Ace, bro. Snake is alive. But then who is Guy X? And why does he have the two bracelet? What happened to Snakes? I left the room I was supposed to search. And headed to the first class cabin on B-Day. His voice showed no emotion, no sense of remorse or interest. It was almost bored, as though he were reciting an especially dull corporate letter. My purpose was to obtain the number 9 bracelet. 9 is a potent ally in the nonary game. Adding 9 to any set of numbers won't alter the digital route. 1 plus 9 equals 10. Uh, 1 plus 0 equals 1. Oh god, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna read all that. That's too much. Too many numbers. As you can see, nine is a very useful number here. Same as zero. With it, one can go anywhere. With anyone. It is, I suppose you could say, a game changer. So I made for the first class cabin to obtain it. In mere moments. I successfully acquired the number nine bracelet. Oh, that's so that's so sad though. If I, uh, if seven didn't like block the door, then Snake would have been safe or Guy X, whatever. There was also an unexpected bonus: the knife the ninth man had used. Oh, but wait, wasn't wasn't Ace dead in the submarine route? I'm confused. I quickly pocketed both of them and left. Oh wait, or maybe he was the one body we didn't check. Maybe. I made my way back to where I was expected to be. But I forgot. That's when I ran into Snake. Well, this guy X actually. I spotted him ahead of me. He was heading for the large hospital room and hadn't noticed me. The man wearing Snake's clothes arrived at door three. When he stopped, I walked up behind him and called out, Snake. He turned around. Huh. Who is this man? Why is he here? Why does he wear Snake's clothes? Or maybe, wait, maybe this is like actually a five head move of Snake. Maybe he like realized Ace was after him. So he like gave like a random guy his clothes because he knew Ace had prosperidosia thingy blah so he would be safe because he's like gigabrain 
he said nothing. His mouth simply hung half open. He seemed dazed somehow, almost like a man half asleep. Oh yeah, with the, with the drug, the, the anesthetic. Perhaps he had been drugged. It wasn't important. I tend to gloss over little things like that. I was certain that man was Snake. I knew Snake had taken part in the Nonary game nine years ago. Being blind, it made sense that he didn't recognize me immediately upon our first meeting. What if he did, though? I'm 100% sure he probably recognized his voice. But why, then, hadn't Snake said anything to me later? Surely he hadn't forgotten what had happened to him in the Nonary game. But not once did he attempt to confront me. Did he... did he lose his arm and like his side in the nonary game was that the accident the incident did his lack of sight prevent him from fully recognizing who i was or perhaps snake had conspired with zero to deceive me regardless he was a threat and it was better to deal with him sooner rather than later i had to get rid of him before he took action with quick thinking my plan went into motion immediately i held the number nine bracelet over the red I waved my own bracelet in front of the red, and then grabbed Snake's arm and shoved his hand against the scanner panel. The door opened. I threw the man through it. <laughs> Nine seconds later, the door shut. 81 seconds passed. The man inside the door passed away. Da -da 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 -da. After that, I returned to my post as though nothing had happened. After conducting my own search, I returned to the large hospital room when the 1 a.m. bell rang. Ace's eyes were cold and his cheeks were hollow and pallid. When he spoke, only his lips and tongue moved. The rest of his face was eerily still. But that means... the... Dead, like the reds, like the inside of the reds were like back already before everyone came together. So sometimes before Ace killed like this guy X, somebody already repaired the reds, huh? <sighs> what if that was also what if that was the bait? What if Snake? Like, I'm, I'm, go I'm going full conspiracy theory now. Like, what if Snake, like, assuming he's zero, or working with zero, zero, what if he, like, um, like, disabled the reds, then placed his dummy, or, like, right here in this room, repaired the reds when everyone was, like, off searching because he knew Ace was gonna try to kill him, so he, like, placed the dummy, to, to like bait him into killing him so he would think that snake is dead the entirety of the time even though he was alive what if that was his plan all along jumpy glared at ace he took a deep breath and thought about the next question he had to ask he didn't want to he knew what the answer would be he just didn't want to hear it jumpy swallowed then spoke ace did you kill clover yes why why did you kill her? She was Snake's sister. It was possible he had told her something dangerous. Additionally, she had gone through door one. It seemed likely she might have found it. Found what? Why don't you go through door one yourself? The submarine. Perhaps it's hidden somewhere. Seven and Lotus interrupted. Yeah, but Lotus and I went through door one too. We didn't see anything suspicious. Yes. I thought as much after I heard your report at the central stairs. I doubt the two of you could find it. Huh. Hmm? Huh? But perhaps Clover was different. Perhaps she had found it. I was, therefore, desperate to find her. Does he mean the piece of paper like the hint for the safe? But why would he know what's in there? And at last I did, in the first class cabin. I spoke very calmly. Did you, Did you see, see it? it? See what? Don't act, act as if you don't understand. understand. You were in the captain's, captain's quarters, quarters, weren't you? Uh-huh. What are you what talking, talking about? about? 
Or does he mean the zero bracelet? Hmm. Very well. Uh, By the way, what are you doing here, Clover? What? Uh, nothing. There's blood on your shoes. It looks fresh. Did you go take a look at the ninth man's corpse? I see. Your silence suggests that you noticed. You saw something, didn't you? You saw that his bracelet was gone. No! Clover ran. She made for the exit, but Ace stood in her way. You aren't going anywhere. He caught her by the collar as she passed and threw her to the floor hard. You're staying here. No! She leapt back up and darted past him into the hallway. Ace followed at a run. <laughs> Don't you run, little girl. He was faster. Ooh. Yikes. Da -da -da. Da -da -da. That was how I killed Clover. <laughs> Thank you for the recap. His face hadn't changed. If he felt guilt or remorse or anything one might feel after taking the life of another human being, it didn't show. You son of a bitch! Seven's whole body trembled with rage and his voice rumbled with hate. <laughs> <gasps> Sender's eyes were bloodthirsty, and Lotus's and June's faces were distorted by anger and hatred. Huh. Ace looked at them and smiled. It was a cold, cruel thing, with no humor in it. He shook his head and sighed. I admit it. I've lost. I have lost. Completely and utterly. Don't misunderstand, Junpei. I didn't lose to you. You lost to Snake. I lost to Zero. Not you. How rude, man. <sighs> I mean, Doompei exposed him, though. I'm rather disgusted with myself for falling into such a simple trap. I look the fool. And it was a trap. Make no mistake. I was trapped and manipulated by Zero. The man I killed in the shower room? If he wasn't Snake, then I have no idea who he was. But he was wearing Snake's clothes. And that was no coincidence. And his bracelet. He had also been injected with something that reduced his cognition and prevented him from identifying himself or resisting me. And we can't forget the components that were removed from the red before we arrived. I have no doubt that Zero planned all of this. Zero made sure I would kill that man. I'm, I'm, I still say it's Snake who planned it that. <sighs> It follows, of course, that Zero knew everything I would do. That I would try to take the number nine bracelet. That I would try to kill Snake. Everything. <sighs> Suddenly, Junpei remembered the paper he'd found in the safe. He remembered the last words Zero had written on it. I must punish them. For their innocent lives they sacrificed. This is the only warning they will receive. That innocent souls might be saved, I now state the truth. Zero. And he remembered other words, words he'd heard from Clover. I think Zero is one of us. Huh? One by one, Junpei looked at the five people standing in front of him. Ace. Santa. June. Seven. Lotus. Zero is one of us. No, wait. There's one more person. Snake. The man who died in the shower room isn't Snake. That means he's almost certainly still alive. Maybe Snake is Zero. Hmm. Maybe he made Guy X wear his clothes so that we don't think he was dead. But now that Junpei is thinking it, I'm like, wait. What if it's a bait? No. What if I'm like just on the same page as Junpei and, and he's wrong? Where's Snake now? What if he's off somewhere laughing at us? If he is Zero, he must have been lying to us about everything else. Is he watching us? How would he be watching us? He is blind. 
Det er så tørt. Well, I believe I've finished with my confession. Why don't we get moving? He sounded as if he just finished doing nothing more exciting than describing the weather. For Santa, it was the last straw. What the hell is this shit? You aren't going anywhere, you son of a bitch! We're gonna leave your ass here to rot! Why? Because I killed Clover? Yeah? That's ridiculous. Why are you so upset that I killed the little bitch? Bruh. She was nothing to you. A stranger you only met a few hours ago. Am I wrong? You bastard! Seven roared and lifted a fist that would likely have shattered at Ace's jaw. But someone else was faster. <laughs> it was Lotus. She stepped towards Ace, raised a fist of her own. Damn. And drove it straight into his nose. Blindsiding me with a punch, huh? You've got some fire, don't you? I confess, I rather like a tough woman. Bruh. He sniffed and wiped a small trickle of blood from his nose with a raised eyebrow. Well, maybe you'd like another one then. Yeah. Uh, before that, let me give you one of my own. Uh, huh? Uh, bruh. Dodge. Lotus scarcely had time to blink. Ace snaked his arms around her and pulled Lotus's back up against him. In the same motion, he reached into his coat pocket. Oh god. It was a gun. Not the gun. And, and that... That face, though. The... Uh, the revolver. Almost lazily, he tilted it to point at Lotus's head. If any of you so much as blink, I won't hesitate to pull this trigger. I've already killed two... No, three people. Don't think I'm not ready to make it four. Yikes. Three people? What do you mean? Hm. Very well. Let me take this opportunity to illuminate you. Oh, he was the one who, like, deceived the ninth man? The person who killed the ninth man was me. Although I suppose to be more accurate, I encouraged him to get himself killed. <sighs> While we were examining the main staircase, he came to me and told me his name. I recognized it at once, so I gave him a little push, just a little white lie. It seems the settings for the dead were altered. Now it only requires a single person to deactivate the detonator in the bracelet. Investigate what's beyond door five. We'll meet again later. And with that... Okay, have a good one, guys. I'm going off ahead now. Well then. Why is it stopping? God damn it! You, you lied! No. I could eat. Open the door, please! I'm begging you! Help me! Please get me out of here! Get me out of here! Oh my god, oh my god! There's no time left! Listen, I was lied to! He lied to me! He put me in here! You could have just said his name! It was him! He killed me! <sighs> it was him! Very, very bad accusation if you're not even like telling the name, SMH. <laughs> SMH. I know that he didn't say it for plot reasons. I know, I know. Dot 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 dot. I had four reasons for killing him. One. As I said before, in the nonary game, the number nine bracelet is of utmost importance. If I had allowed him to keep such a useful tool, he, or it, would have become a threat to me. As such, I decided that he should be eliminated early on. Two. I wanted the number nine bracelet. If I could manage to obtain it, I would be able to manipulate the game as I saw fit. I would be unable to acquire the bracelet unless its owner was dead. That's the second reason. Three. Even setting aside his number, he would have been nothing but trouble for me. He was aware of my past. He knew what happened here nine years ago. It was important that I eliminate him before he was able to disseminate this information. Four. Lastly, I wished to conduct a simple test. Bruh. A test to see if this nonary game was serious 
or a poor attempt at a joke. I needed to be quite sure. As such, I encouraged him to act against the rules so that I might observe the outcome. So wait, is he actually, like, for real? He sent, like, kids into, like... Like, he's implying that the nonary game that Ace... Uh, bro, why do I keep saying Ace? Snake, like, was part in. Which I think is the experiment, but then why wouldn't Clover have been in there? I don't know. But so he's saying that the nonary game nine years ago was the same as this one right now. So he sent a bunch of like nine year old kids to solve these puzzles unless they die. What the fuck is wrong with them? Jumpe glared at them. I don't get your third motive. What the hell happened nine years ago? Didn't I say? The nonary game was played. I planned it out, and I conducted its execution. Why? What on earth was it supposed to do? I don't really think I have any obligation to tell you that. Bruh. Ace smirked. He was trying to provoke them, and it was working. Although Ace had paid very little attention to Lotus after catching her, the gun had never wavered from her temple. She looked quite pale, and when she spoke, her voice shook. Hey, what's with this gun? Where did he get this? Why don't you tell her, Santa? Santa ground his teeth and glared at Ace. On the other side of door six, we found the gun in the coffin in the cargo room, right? The bastard must have grabbed it when we weren't looking. Indeed I did. That was a pretty serious mistake, you know. Just saying you intended to leave it behind. Ace laughed, a short derisive snort, and gave Junpei a sickly pitying look. Well, there isn't much time left. I'll be off then. Well, where are you going? Do I really need to explain? I had assumed it would be obvious. I have the number nine bracelet. And now I have Lotus. Uh, 9 plus 8 plus 1 equals 18, 1 plus 8 equals 9. Wasn't there a door with a 9 on it in the room that looked like a church? That's where you're going, isn't it? So then who's in the coffin? And how do you know that? Santa told me about it while we were looking for Clover. I see. Well, you are correct. That is my destination. But now I must say goodbye to all of you. Ah, and please, don't forget my warning. Move and I'll pull the trigger. I don't need her alive to open the door, you know. As he spoke, Ace began backing towards the door, practically dragging Lotus behind him. Poor Lotus. Shit. He's getting away! But we can't risk it. Junpei Center, June and Seven stood, frozen. Ace had the face of a man gone mad. They had no doubt he would pull the trigger. Ace had reached the exit. Now, Lotus, open the door for me if you would. <laughs> he forced Lotus to open it and then turned and addressed them at one once more. Goodbye. Then he stepped through the door. Yikes, man. It fell shut. In the blink of an eye, they were gone. Damn it! As soon as Ace and Lotus were gone, Junpei and the others leapt for the door in pursuit of Ace. But as Junpei laid his hands on the doorknob... Uh. Jun! Why now? There was a noise behind him. He looked over his shoulder. Jun was kneeling on the floor, breathing heavily. I like how that he reads reused this. <laughs> like this image but with Sandra instead hey june what happened are you all right Sandra ran to june and wrapped his arm around uh, around her before she could collapse all the way i mean i guess it makes sense you know like drawing is uh hard and expensive jesus you're burning up your fever's back are you okay june's fever had returned again for no apparent reason her eyes were watery and her eyelids drooped her breath came in dry, swallow gasps. I'm okay. Really, I'm fine. You should be worrying about Lotus. She was breathing hard now, and she could barely summon the strength to talk. But... Junpei was torn. He couldn't leave June alone in the state she was in. But every moment they waited, Ace was farther away, Lotus's life in his hands. What was Junpei supposed to do? I mean, also, we don't know. I mean, he could just 
also kill her whenever he opens the door and just gets out. So, um, we should kind of, yeah, get moving. June's eyes drifted to Junpei's. She managed to muster a weak smile. Jumpy, don't worry about me. I just need a little rest. I'll be fine. Don't you remember? I just needed to rest a little bit last time. So please, please save Lotus. Think about what Ace has already done, Junpei. When he's got what he needs from Lotus, you really think he's just gonna let her walk away? Exactly. Damn it. You guys go on ahead. Soon as June starts feeling better, we'll follow you. Go! <sighs> Junpei looked at June. Huh. She nodded once. She couldn't manage much more. But it was all the confirmation Junpei needed. His resolve was set. All right. Come on, Seven. We're going after Ace. Yeah, let's get oh, the yeah. bitch. Santa, you take good care of June. I'm trusting you. Got it. Santa nodded. Junpei turned before he had a chance to change his mind and started running towards the door. He could hear Seven's heavy footsteps behind him. Let's go! Junpei and Seven exploded into the hallway, their feet pounding the metal floor as they ran. Hold <laughs> up. Run, boys, run! We need to save Lotus! Imagine if Seven was actually faster than Lotus and like punched him. Then he he wouldn't have have Lotus and then he couldn't open the door. <laughs> what a shame. <sighs> Junpei and Seven had finally arrived at the church, exhausted and out of breath. As their lungs struggled to catch their breath, their eyes frantically scanned the room. Where are they? I don't see them. You think they already went through? He reached up to wipe his palm full of sweat from his brow. Maybe. Even as he spoke, Junpei was already on his way to the larger of the nine uh, of the number nine doors. Let's check the red. The display panel read vacant. He spun around and headed towards the smaller door. This red would tell him if Ace and Lotus had moved to another room. Engaged. It's occupied. Ooh. That means Ace and Lotus went through here. Yeah, it seems like it. Junpei and Seven stepped away from the door. They retreated to the center of the room and began to talk. What do we do now? Yeah, uh, what should we do? Well, the big door is still vacant, but... The two of us can't do anything with it. Yeah, not even counting how our digital route isn't nine. Just then, as they were pondering what to do next... Oh. There was a noise. A noise like someone hitting a thick wooden panel. What's that sound? A snake in there? <laughs> I mean, it, ca it can't be Clover anymore, she's dead. Jumpy looked up, surprised. Seven followed suit, his eyes jumping around the room, looking for the source of the sound. It's coming from over there. It wasn't long before they found the altar. Or more precisely, what was on it. The coffin. Yeah. Let's open it. Or maybe it is all eyes, all Alice. How? By force! <laughs> it won't be. I don't think that's gonna happen. Well, you never know till you try, right? The only necessity for success is the willingness to suffer 1,000 failures. Who said that? I, I forget. <laughs> anyway, we've gotta try. Junpei and Seven leapt at the coffin. They grabbed hold of what purchase they could find and pulled. Damn it! See? Didn't I tell you? If you could just pull it open, why would it have something like that? Seven pointed at a keypad on the side of the coffin. Right. So unless I put in the right passcode, it's not gonna open. The noise hadn't stopped. In fact, as it continued, it had only gotten louder and more forceful. I don't think we have much time left. What were they supposed to do, Junpei wondered. Was there some sort of clue somewhere? Oh. 
They stood there for a few moments, staring at the coffin, and then Seven spoke. Hey, Junpei. I remember you mumbling about some weird numbers over by the bathroom in the first-class cabin. You got those numbers by solving the secret message Clover was holding, right? Truth had gone, or something like that. Yeah, that's right. What about it? Well, maybe that number's the passcode for this thing, too. <sighs> Come on, that's impossible. Those numbers were the code to unlock that safe. Yeah, but the person who set up that safe in this coffin is the same person, right? Zero set up both of these. Yeah, probably. Well, then they might have set the same passcode for both of them. I mean, it's worth a shot. That's ridiculous. Why don't you just try it? I mean, it's not like you'll make things any worse. It'd just be a waste of time. There's no way they're the same number. Bruh, just, just try it. How do you know that? You never know until you try. The only necessity for success is the willingness to suffer a thousand failures. Wow. <sighs> Who said that? You. Got him. Uh, fine. He knelt down in front of the keypad and looked at it. He just doesn't want to admit that he forgot the numbers. Perhaps because he'd repeated them so many times before, the numbers came easily to Jumpy's mind. 1438 3421. Quickly he typed them in. 1438 3421. He checked that he'd entered the right numbers, took a deep breath, and pressed the E button. It only took a moment. What? Y you gotta be kidding me. There was a click. And with a heavy clunk, the lid of the coffin slid off onto the floor. Someone sat up from inside. Uh, Snake! It is him! You? Why? Ah, those voices. Junpei and Seven, unless I'm mistaken. Where are the others? Are they elsewhere? He is back, but I guess uh, that destroys my whole he is zero theory, I guess. I mean, he could be acting, who knows. Of course, there was no reason Snake would have known anything about where anyone else would be. Although, uh, unless why would he be in the coffin? And he was probably about to die considering how friending is the pounding god. <sighs> Junpei and Seven looked at one another. There was a great deal he needed to know, but... Da -da -da. Da -da -da. They had to tell him something, however, so they began to talk. Snake explained to the, them how he came to be locked in the coffin. Apparently he'd been hit with some sort of knockout gas, and Junpei and Seven explained what had happened to the rest of them. Hmm. I see. I believe I got the gist of everything. Have I been sufficiently caught up? No, there was one thing they kept from him. There was one thing, however, that neither Seven nor Junpei could bring themselves to say. That Ace had killed Clover. They feared that if Snake knew, he might well go insane. Yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> they decided as much by a look the moment Snake had climbed out of the coffin. But that still doesn't explain why you were trapped in here. We've still got no clue about Zero's true identity, let alone why the hell he's doing all this. Why did he put Guy X in Snake's clothes? Is all this stuff somehow related to that notary game that was played nine years ago? Hey, Snake, do you know anything? Junpei put the question to Snake. His answer was less than illuminating. Um, what are you talking about? I apologize, but I have no idea what you're saying. That is so sus. It seemed as though Snake was perhaps not being entirely honest, but that knowledge did Junpei and Seven little good. Oh, come on, just tell us if you know. I don't know what to tell you. How can I know something I don't? Hmm. No matter how many times they asked, he insisted that he knew nothing. Or maybe they deleted his memory, I don't know. It was becoming clear that Snake wouldn't give in, and every second they spent ta asking him was a second wasted. This is bad. We're running out of time. We need to go after Ace. However... They stood in silence, the overpowering atmosphere of the chapel almost stifling. Junpei and Seven and Snake simply stood at a loss for what they should do next. What do we do now? He glanced over at Snake's wrist. True enough, he could see the two on the bracelet on the Snake's wrist. 
The three of us can't make a digital root of nine. Yeah, we'd just get five. We're stuck here, then. Oh. Hey, I just remembered something. Seven began patting his pockets as if he were checking to see if any of them held anything. What? What is it? I, um, uh, I found something earlier. Oh? What did you find? This. He'd finally found the pocket he wanted, and his hand dove into it. Seven pulled out something round and metal. A bracelet? Oh yeah. There was no mistaking the number glow uh, glowing at them from the face like a cartoon eye. So he is saying that he and Snake should just go alone? Zero. Zero's bracelet. What did you say? Are you saying that Seven has the number zero bracelet? Yeah. Where did you get that? Snake's question was innocent enough, but if he learned the truth... If he'd been able to see, he would have noticed Seven look away. Clover gave it to me. She did? Yeah. How did she come by it? Well, she found it. See, on the other side of door one, a deck, the captain's quarters. She asked me to hold on to it because it was too big and bulky for her to be lugging around. <laughs> yeah, would have loved her to do that in in the X ending. He's lying. Trumpe could tell right away. Seven wasn't telling the truth. He even told us earlier. I haven't actually looked at it yet. Didn't want to disturb the crime scene, you know? Basic stuff. Though. Well, I did borrow one thing. He probably said that so Snake doesn't find out about Clover. That was that. That was that. All right, Junpei. Been nice knowing you. Oh. Uh, Wait, what? Seven plus two plus zero equals nine. Come on, man. I'm just kidding. <sighs> Still, just in case, I want to make sure the zero bracelet gets picked up by the red. Snake, give me a hand, all right? Without waiting for a response, he started walking towards the door. Junpei and Snake followed him quietly. Before long, they found themselves in front of the larger of the two doors. Seven and Snake put their palms on the red. Once they'd done that, Seven put the number zero bracelet on the scanner panel as well. A third asterisk appeared on the screen. Seven plus two plus zero still equals nine. Now they just needed to pull the lever and the door would open. Huh? Why isn't it opening? Um, well, the third asterisk lit up, so... It must have registered the zero bracelet. Hmm. Maybe it isn't actually zero. Huh? What? That bracelet may not actually produce the number zero when scanned. Wait, wait... Is it like 10? That is what I'm saying. Hmm. Hmm. Why don't we try a few different combinations? Perhaps we can determine what number that bracelet actually contains. But Snake, I'm sorry, I'm not smart enough for this. Oh, got it! Junpei nodded. They decided to use the following combination. Ugh. I'm, I'm not smart enough for this. So I think... I think we're just gonna figure this out in the next episode, aren't we? Um... And hopefully we are fast enough to like still save Lotus because I don't know I don't want her to die too. She she doesn't deserve this I I, I think. <laughs> it's it's still kind of weird how she is in this nonary game when Zero wanted a revenge against uh like the people from like that conducted the first nonary game. And, uh, I mean, she's just the mother of two participants, I'm assuming. Or maybe maybe the, the experiments are different from the Nornary game? Because... This is what confused me, because Clover said that she was part of the experiments too. But they say that Snake is the only one who, like, um... Actually participated in the first Nornary game, so... Who knows? I'm uh, still a little bit confused, but, um... We'll get the answer eventually. I don't know if in this route or whenever, but 
yeah hope you guys enjoyed the part i'm gonna see you guys in the next one bye bye